Hello and welcome to another episode of the Infinite Backlog podcast. I am Ricardo. I'm Todd. What episode are we actually on now? I I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on the ball. Yes, we are. But I know what we're talking about today, and that would be Batman Arkham Asylum. I set a trap and you sprang it gloriously. Now let's get this party started. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you remembered, because I kept forgetting. Oh, okay, well, I, I have all these points <laughs> listed that we're going to talk about, and hopefully you remember what I'm talking about. Um, Batman Arkham Asylum, kind of, to me, a hitter that came out of nowhere, um, especially for a superhero game. Superhero games, for a while, had a bad stigma of just being, at the most, just bearable. They were uh, think... like, movie tie-ins and, like, TV show tie-ins and things like that, yeah. weren't they, for a long time? Yeah, uh, like, what was it? Hulk Ultimate Destruction, I would say, was the highlight before Batman. Like, everybody knew about Hulk Ultimate Destruction. That was a pretty fun game. I never played it, uh, but from what I understand, everybody liked it. I remember Rinse in the demo for it quite a bit. Yeah, so... But, um, I remember like when they first sort of announced that they were making a Batman game, everyone was a bit sort of dubious because there hadn't been anything good for a while. No. But, to be fair, when you look back on the history of Batman games, they haven't been as atrocious as things like Superman, but there hasn't also been anything major since, like, you know, the Super Nintendo days. No, so there were a, a couple... There were a couple games um, in between. There was a couple, but nothing as heard of, if you know what I mean, or as heard of as a disgrace. Yeah. Like, Batman, he was the lucky one. He just got games that were definitely, like, okay. He Mediocre, never got anything but... atroci- atrocious. No. Um, until Batman Arkham Asylum. Actually, I want to say Batman Arca- Arkham Asylum came out at the perfect time. Because the Dark Knight just came out. Um, the sad passing of Heath Ledger uh, was about. But people were deaf. Batman was on the mind to everybody. And to just gamers in general. Hearing a new game. Um, Rocksteady, uh, the developer. Did they make anything before Batman Ar- Arkham Asylum? Like anything of note? Um, I don't think it's anything of note. I think they might have worked on a couple of titles with people, um, mm-hmm. but I can't obviously guarantee that at the moment. Yeah. I can if you give me a second, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were sort of out of nowhere, just became big heavy hitters as yeah, soon they... as they did the Batman game. People don't even really know how they got the license for it. Oh, yeah, because wasn't like it your big um, studios? Square Enix owns, owns it now, but who owned it before? Um. Or was it? Oh no! It was a Square Enix title. Then WB took it back. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, so. they literally made Urban Chaos in 2006. The studio only started in 2004. What was, was Urban it. Chaos? Exactly, it's a PS2 and Xbox game. It was like 75% so. or 73 on Metacritic. Published by IDOS. IDOS. Yeah, that's yeah. who it was because. Square Enix uh, merged IDOS Square Enix their bought company. IDOS and that's why Arkham Asylum had the um, Square Enix name on it in some territories as well as Warner Brothers mm-hmm. now, but yeah for a studio that only made one game that was a huge licensing bill for them yeah and what a game it was because uh, on top of just making a really good superhero based game they got a whole bunch of voice cast which I know you don't really care about but to me, this is great because it was the voice cast from the Batman uh, animated series back in the day. Uh, Bruce Tim was the creator of that. Um, you have Kevin Conroy as Batman. In my opinion, he is the best Batman. His The way he just talks is fantastic. You have Mark Hamill as the Joker, which is the best Joker. And I'm sorry people are going to kill me, but I do not remember who Harley Quinn was. But Harley Quinn did reprise her role as Harley Quinn. I just don't remember the voice actress. Hey, you know more voice actors' names than I do. I honestly know, like, none. Well, you know Mark Hamill's Luke Skywalker. Oh, Ryan yeah, everyone knows who Mark Hamill is, let's be honest. That's, that's like, different. That's, like, name-dropping right there. <laughs> yeah. But they had a great voice cast, um... But let's actually talk about the game now. We're four minutes in, and we have not talked anything about the game except the history and the the voice cast. 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, obviously for a student so unknown, I think they just nailed it from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, just the intro, some people might have found it slow and a bit tedious, but I think walking through the asylum with the Joker just sort of set up the atmosphere for the whole game. Yeah. Um, you see Killer Croc, you don't yeah. ever really see Killer Croc properly for a long time in the game, but that's just like the start of things to come. Oh yeah, it definitely is. Like it's, I wish for Arkham Asylum, I wish there were more cameos to see as you were walking in. But um, the more you play the game, you walk through the asylum and everything, and you start to see uh, hints of other characters that may or may not be in future games. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, there was a cameo to Calendar Man who did show up in Arkham City. Um, you saw Riddler's uh, cell, like, right away. Uh, you had Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Who else did you see? Oh, you do You do see Clayface. Um, you don't see him in his mud form. He's just taking the form of other people. But it's still yeah. pretty cool. Uh, oh, yeah. Isn't that later on you see that in, in one of the cells? Yeah, it's actually right you after Poison Clayface Ivy. Yes, when, yeah, when you get the decoders to unlock doors, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that bit. Yeah, I remember that bit too because I was really confused to see Commissioner Gordon behind a <laughs> yeah. like glass wall, and I could not see a skeleton. It wasn't until my playthrough of it, not recently, but the second time, that I noticed that it was Clayface. Yeah, I think I was streaming it, and I was like, "Oh, that's fucking Clayface!" Yeah, but I think if you go away and you go back, I think he's a different person. He can it? actually no, it's on a timer. He changes because last yeah. time I played it, um, he was Quincy Sharp. The warden of uh, Arkham City, uh, not Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, yeah. and then he switched to Aaron Cash, like right, right before my eyes. So it's more. I think it's based on a timer. And ah, then he fair just starts enough. saying other things. Um, so I know I've seen him change, but I couldn't remember because like, it's been a long time since I played it. But I remember a lot about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else is there? Uh, by cameo base. I mean, like, there's so much. I mean. There's so Even, much packed into a first game. Yeah, it's for a first crazy. game, it's it's insane. I mean, the Riddler was put into like integrated into the game in such a in such a like good the, way, like something yeah. that fits him. Yeah, like that was like those like the side missions, like the sub content was riddles. Yeah, and that was fantastic. Like I loved finding the riddles. My recent playthrough of the game. I was I was just going for the riddles. I didn't have to go for the riddles. That was all optional content, but I wanted yeah. to. Um, even if you're like if you're a fan of the comics, some of the riddles really do like. It, it helps to find out no. what happens, yeah. and then other riddles are just fun little things. Like it, it all works. It works for the person that knows Batman and the person that doesn't know Batman. Yeah, it's it's. it's either flesh out your knowledge or it's like a little treat it's like an easter egg yeah and you know you have you have his riddles on top of that you have the riddler trophies which are also fun to find helps you really explore the area and gives you a reason to also explore it um thinking about it right now kind of reminds me of like banjo kazooie like how you um, would go through the nooks and crannies of the of each area just to find these riddles and yeah these trophies just find the extra little things yeah but I think it just goes to show how good the actual level design is without, you know, because sometimes you see an area and you just think, oh, it's an outdoor area, I've got to go there, you just run across it. Like, you yeah. don't actually explore it when there's lots of, like, little vents here, or, like, little towers there, you know, like, zip lines and things like that to actually traverse and get around. Um, yeah. Like, explodable walls to find things behind. Yeah, and you're saying all this stuff, person that's never played the game, that would sound weird, but... You gotta understand, like, Arkham Asylum is an old, decrepit place for the criminally insane and supervillains of Gotham. And being old, it would have those walls, and then on top of that, you do see how how the old and new sort of mesh together. Because you have, like, certain cells to hold certain villains. Yeah, well, they've been obviously rebuilt and everything. Yeah, which helps like uh you do see like mr freeze's cell um to say if he's in there or not i'm not a hundred percent but his cell is like s icicles are forming out of it and everything and it makes sense like okay yeah you'd put him in that 
He has to and stay in the cold uh, area. And then got electric, electrified floors outside. Yep, you have the electrified, electrified floors, which is, uh, which, that area is pretty cool. Um, yeah, talking so about that area, that's where you fight, like, a whole bunch of goons, and combat is superb for, again, a first attempt at a Batman game. Yeah. Like they they kind of revolutionized like the action game combat, if you will, to the point where it's even being sort of copied by other game franchises. Like it was used in uh, Lord of the Rings: Shadow of Mordor. Uh -huh. um, obviously, not the exact same thing. They did do their own thing with it, but they did use the same kind of free flow combat. I would say that it's more of a simplified version of uh, Assassin's Creed's combat. Yeah. To an extent, because um, essentially you have two buttons. You have a punch button, punch or kick, depending on the action, and you have a counter button. But I wouldn't say necessarily simplified, because with Assassin's Creed, only any one enemy attacks at a time, whereas with Batman, some someone goes to punch and someone else comes from another angle. Yeah. Um, I think the AI is a bit more sophisticated when it comes to Batman. And also, you play on a hard and you get no kind of notice of you know an attack you've got to work out what you're going to do and you've got the different enemy types so some some you can only dodge some you can parry yeah um talking about that the ai is definitely a lot more sophisticated um these goons even though this is for my friend friend um it's always funny to you walk into your room and these guys know who batman is what he does and they're the first person to say i'm gonna take down the bat and goes right for you as you punch him right square in the face. <laughs> you know, like, that's 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 a little funny thing, but the AI is definitely a lot more sophisticated. Um, they do gang up on you. Uh, they tend to use their area to their advantage. If there's like a pipe on the wall, they will try to pull it out to use as a bat to sort of swing at Batman. And in very much the same way, uh, when you use your counter button, Batman will like grab that that pipe or bat stick whatever they have and like sl like grab it off out of their hands and then swing it back at them which you know it's pretty cool the uh the, the way the combat works it's very dynamic in a way like you don't you don't really do much but you do it does look cool and you do feel powerful being batman punching everybody it doesn't feel so much like quick time events either. Like in in a way, it kind of is because you just press a button and loads of cool shit happens. Yeah. But it's not at the same time. So you have to be attentive to what like the actual um, mobs are doing rather than paying attention to what buttons you're pressing. Yeah, especially on the higher sense. difficulties. Yeah. Yeah, but then also you say it's only like two buttons, but it's, it's three, isn't it? Cause you've got the you can jump over an enemy, you can parry an enemy, you can punch, and then you can also um, use your cloak for when they would stab you. You use I your cloak about the to cloak. stun them, don't you? Yeah, but the cloak is only used on special enemies and isn't yeah, really that utilized. Yeah, the batons well. and things like that. Yeah, um, what's it called? Uh, though you are right in saying that there is a third button, because you do have your gadgets, which throw in uh, a new way to fight mobs of enemies because that goes on the triggers because you get the um what's batarangs it? you have the batarangs and then you also have the grapple yeah you have the grapple those are the only two that you get in arkham asylum in arkham yeah. city you they're, they're actually more. act as part of the battle system anyway yeah which it does it does like vary the uh system up a bit and you were saying earlier about the uh difficulty yeah um i gotta say like it, it's it's hard for developers to sometimes grasp the way a character has to like wind up for a hit for certain games, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And Arkham, if you're not really paying attention to it, Arkham Asylum, you kind of don't really notice it on the lower difficulties because you have that little big old spidey sense thing over your enemy's head. But when you play on the high, higher difficulties, you start to notice those little... Uh, the subtle movements that yeah. the thugs make, and that really helps you um, fight back, and makes you feel like a badass when you are like taking on twenty guys and you're countering all their shit and you're you're snapping their legs. I love it it's so great. See, hard, hard is actually harder. Obviously, I know it's called hard. I'm not that stupid, but 
like at first I remember before I even played it I was quite daunted by the fact that there's no commands like above yeah. the enemies but what you it's one of these things you have to actually do it and it's fine like once you get into the rhythm of it, it's actually it's easy like it's not actually hard it's just getting in the rhythm yeah and actually noticing those little movements yeah and that's that's very rare to see in a western developed game you usually see that in like Japanese games, um, Platinum, you see that a lot of, yeah. like, Revengeance. You have to really watch your enemy as opposed to worrying about a command prompt. But on Hard, they really did do a good job of making that. On the lower difficulties, that was definitely for people to casually get through the game. But if you ramp up the difficulty, it definitely is a challenge. Um, but combat isn't the only thing within Batman Arkham Asylum. Batman, as we know from the uh, Nolan films, is also a ninja, and stealth is also a really big part of this game and i feel that it's it's fantastic especially for a first attempt again for a first attempt it's it's so good um i do have an issue with the gargoyles being in every stealth room (laughs) i i I, I love that like you know you build a massive prison it's like a really old decrepit castle oh well i know we can get away with gargoyles in every single room but that you know, everyone work. has them inside a building. Yes, but that doesn't work. Gargoyles are meant for outside <laughs> drainage. Practical use really doesn't make much sense in uh, in Arkham Asylum. They could have done a little bit more. Yeah, um, they could. I think uh... I think the overhead things are improved on in Arkham City, but I, I have to replay that to make sure. While the gargoyles are a dumb thing in my opinion i do feel like the stealth mechanic is really cool um how enemies how not only your enemies react to how you take out every individual um thug i like how the how as you progress through the game the game also evolves if you know what i mean it evolves as you get new gadgets basically yeah as you get new gadgets and they like they start to get wiser um, yeah, they get the uh, suicide collars, so yeah. when enemies knocked out, they know that that guy was knocked out. Uh, later on, they set up bombs on the gargoyles, so you can't go zipping around the rooftop. You have to stay at the bottom. Yeah, you have to stay at the bottom and play it out. Um, though, I think Batman Arkham Asylum also introduced probably the worst mechanic, at least for a trope in video games, if you will detective mode oh right yeah oh that was kind of annoying that but it was very rarely needed unless you're doing all the riddler stuff and yeah yeah actually no hang on i'm completely wrong you need it all the time you need to find all the secret walls the little passages you need to find out about the enemies see yes. them through the walls yeah everything it was Which, like his bat sense yeah it is like his bat sense it is kind of a shame because the game itself like while it does use muddy colors like a lot of browns and greens like dirt greens it does it's a really nice looking game it it's appropriate for a batman game yeah um and it is a shame that you do play most of the game in that detective mode and it is a shame that a lot of other developers in other games use that very same vision and called it something else you yeah. know like i don't well, like that even to this point it's, it's in um the latest Resident Evil game that um, Capcom did as well, the one that was on, well, not the latest, the one that was on the 3DS. Was Revelations? Revelations? Yeah. Revelations. Yeah. It's even in that. It was in Revelations, it was in a James Bond game. It's just everywhere. Yeah, but the best thing that someone can take from the Arkham series is um, the combat. Yeah, I would <laughs> Don't I take would anything else. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Um,. On top of that, the combat, while the combat and stealth were great, I think where the game really suffers is, is is in boss battles. That was exactly what I was about to say. Because it's they they are terrible. They're just another version of the fights. Like Bane, you literally just do the same as you do with any fight. Well, except you, you know what? You know Bane. what's funny? Bane isn't like while Bane is technically your first boss, you actually fight that Titan demon first no not titan demon but that titan prisoner first 
and that oh, sets yeah. up how you fight every boss in the game. And then you've got like, is it like Binglings or something where you fight other ones like that? Ti yeah, like, you've you got the one that comes titans. out the elevator, doesn't it? Titans, yeah, it's Titans, isn't it? Yeah, they're called Titans. But, yeah. Yeah, tit the Titans were probably the weak, not the weakest point because they were a challenge to fight, especially amongst normal thugs. But and they used them a lot. Yeah, but it was it's just so disappointing when you have such a game as well crafted as Batman to like fight such boring bosses. While they do test your reaction time and how to use like your batarang while in combat, it doesn't really do much beyond that because after Bane, you fight more Titan uh, Titan uh, dudes. You fight Poison Ivy, who while being a nice change of pace really isn't much. It's a boring fight. It's a boring fight. You literally just use bat rings and well, dodge around and that's about it. I think the fight would have been nice if it stuck to the three hit like system. Because you fight yeah. you hit her three times and then and then you go for another three times. And when I've recently replayed it, I was bored. Yeah. Because I had to so redo bad. it another three times. Yeah. So that was disappointing. And then, big shocker, if you've never played Arkham City or Arkham Asylum, my god, I'm never going to stop getting all these names mixed up. But if you've never played Arkham Asylum, you fight Joker at the end. I'm not going to say how you fight him, but he is not very different from what we've already talked about. No. Even the room before you fight Joker, like when he leaves to go to the roof, there's two Titans in there oh, with a yeah. massive load of people, and they are the worst Titans it's they are so annoying they are but before entering that room you go through a hallway filled with thugs clapping as you walk down i love that room that room is that, fun that was so confusing it was like, very confusing they actually let you through yeah <laughs> it's very confusing but it's also very fun to beat up on all those dudes because it's such a small room as well yeah that's the smallest room with the most people that you'll ever fight in the game and that's a lot of fun to me and yeah, but the good thing is the camera doesn't mess up too much. No, the camera is is pretty good. Um, though I haven't had many camera issues with too many games as of late. Revengeance. <clears throat> well, Revengeance only has a little bit, and that's usually the elevator. <laughs> no, it's got a lot. I am. I gotta replay it <laughs> to, to say anything. <laughs> but yeah, Batman. Like overall, they did really well with that, and. But it's just like, yeah, like I said, the bosses was the worst thing. Bosses are sadly, like, the worst. And that's, that's the other thing. You don't, you don't, if I remember right, you don't actually fight Killer Croc, do you? You just run away from him in a basement. Yeah, you go into his basement. Sewers. Yeah. Actually, then, funny thing about Scarecrow, the Killer Croc. you don't fight Scarecrow. He no. just sprays you. Though his his levels were the most interesting. That is like, true. Cause... They were, uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose you didn't actually fight him, did you? Actually just go through his nightmares. Yeah, you go through his toxic gas gas yeah. stuff, and that was pretty cool. And I, think I can't that's wait the to most see. Interesting part of the game. Yeah. Though, uh, funny thing with the Killer, killer Croc area, um, if you're playing on a mouse and keyboard, the button to counter, um, you can abuse that button uh, while on the keyboard. So essentially, you can get through almost all of Croc's lair by just countering. Because when you counter. Batman moves forward a little bit, and that does not make the uh, boards... Like, that does not give any motion to the boards. So you can get through <laughs> his whole area by just, like, kung fu -ing your way through it. It's fantastic. I bet there's some video on YouTube about it. If there isn't, I'm going to make it, because it's hilarious. Oh, you got to do that. I did not know that. But then who'd want to play it with keep one mouth? I did. I did on hard. I streamed that. But why? Because I didn't have a controller. <laughs> Oh, dude, and the only so... way I can play it was through uh, my computer, <laughs> and that was when I used my laptop. That was in it. That was crazy. Oh God! Before you built the rig. Yep, before I built my rig. That's <laughs> that was really crazy. But see, and obviously, like following on from like the bosses and the cameos. What about the ending? The ending was. Well, I know you don't like what happens. I obviously, still I'm not think... worried about spoiling like, at all because obviously, if you no, but I kind of want, you know. I kind of want people to play it for themselves if they listen on to this. Um, 
what happens at the end, what Batman does to the Joker, is fucking badass. I love that shit. I'm not on about that. I want the credit ending. The credit ending? Oh, yeah. Shit. I don't think I saw the credit ending. Like, whose hand comes out the water? Oh, Bane. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, it all depends. You see, that, that would be spoilers if that was, like, the main thing of the next game, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not just, it's not always Bane, is it? It's different people, depending it, on what you do, isn't it? I don't, yeah, it can, it's either Bane or Scarecrow. I do remember that, yeah. I thought it was Killer Croc as well. I didn't know about Killer Croc. I, I thought it was a few Croc. of them. I don't know how you get those endings, though. That's weird. Ah, see? Well, I guess I gotta finish the game now. Flip the ocean here so my hand surfaces and grabs it. Let's see, post credit scene. Way to fill the dead air. Hey, by searching I'm trying for to things. find out. I need to. You got five I minutes! I can't find it! <laughs> but yeah, no, they do have that. Yeah. But it's the post credit scene. Yeah. Um, again, if they did anything with it for the sequel, that would be cool, but not much comes of that. No. And a lot... It's, it's so crazy that this was a first attempt at a Batman game uh, for Rocksteady. It did so well. It's become its own franchise. It seems like every year now they're going to have... It's going to be like yeah. new Call of Duty, you know? You have... You have the one team developing Batman, and then the next year another team developing another Batman game. I think that's oh, how it's going to be. I think that's how it's going to be, because Arkham Origins was that. Ah, here we go. Yeah, it can be one of three, and it's just random. It's just random? Yep. Scarecrow, Killer Croc, or Bane. Apparently it's random. I've only gotten Killer... I've only gotten Bane and Scarecrow. Yeah, I, I've had Killer Croc. Again, if something actually came of that, that would be cool. But nothing did in this era. Yeah. But well, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. But that just leads us on to the sequels now. Which, to be fair, I've never actually finished. You need uh, to finish. City. You need to finish City. City never is touched actually... Origins, but we're not doing Origins anyway. Nope. We will not do Origins because it seems like Rocksteady does not care for that game. As well, they didn't make it. Sequel. It's not part of their plants is it it was no but part it's, of their plans. it's still wb and you think wb would be like hey this is now a part of your your canon you have to fit this in somehow to your game no Do it. they'd be like we want money <laughs> yeah just fucking live with it <laughs> yeah but again fantastic game all around um just aside from the bosses which were the weakest and they definitely did fix in the second game like they they learned some like crazy lesson and had amazing bosses, and being able to make it more um, sort of decisive for yourself rather than just having a fight section here and a stealth section there, yeah, making it a bit more independent. For yeah, you. yeah, that's what I forgot to mention is like that's you had specific areas for stealth and action, and that was boring. But it was an amazing game, had an amazing story, terrible ending. Eh, yeah, it was. What it happens is cool, fight. but it's, it's yeah. The boss fight was terrible, but what happens at the end is pretty fucking cool. I still like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Great voice nice. cast. Just all Great around combat. fantastic game. Great combat. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I think That's we're done. Pretty... Yeah. <laughs> See you next time when we talk about Arkham City, and that is a game I have a lot to say because it's <laughs> so good in every way. I'll see you guys next time. See you later. Oh, I'd like to thank my fans for their undying support and the people of Gotham, who I'll be seeing very, very soon. <laughs>